Amen. Welcome, welcome. Yet again to another Primal Man of God series. Come on into the room. I'm going to make sure that everybody's on before it gets started. Let me make sure we're working properly. Let me know you're in here. Awesome. Welcome, everybody, yet again to another series of the Primal Man of God. We air every Monday, Eastern Standard Time. Just letting everybody get in before we get started. Share, like, and invite. Share, like, and invite. Let me know that you guys are on before we get started in prayer. I hope everybody had an awesome week, an amazing week. We have an awesome line up tonight powerful man of god many of you know him through the internet god has used him in mighty ways and he's also just a a, a battle of mine as well both shared military experience marcus rogers phenomenal man of god so most most definitely just share like and invite i'm going to open up in prayer just allow holy spirit just to guide us this this evening just let me know you in with me God, we just thank you so much for this time. God, you're wonderful and worthy to be praised. God, you're so wonderful, so beautiful, and so magnanimous. God, no one is above you. Jesus, you are the purchasing power for our lives. And no one can stand against the blood. No one can stand against your, your ways. You are, the, you are the great I am, the almighty king. And I thank you on tonight, Jesus, for everybody that's on with us, Lord God, that you just impact their lives, impact their souls, God. Thank you for Marcus Rogers and his ministry. Father God, continue to take him to the higher heights and newer depths, Lord God, and continue to rally the people around his ministry. We thank you tonight, God, that you're bringing us together into sector leadership, a lateral leadership where is a nameless, faceless generation where we all represent the king. It doesn't matter who or what, but it's all that matters is the name of Jesus is raised. I thank you right now tonight, God, that you are getting the glory. You get the praise. And so, Father, we worship you. We give you glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus, for my brothers that are watching, Lord God, that need to be empowered. Thank you for my sisters, Lord God, that need that encouragement. Thank you for my comrades and my friends and co-workers that need that a push in their assistance. Let this be a conversation that transforms lives. Let this be a conversation that transforms ways. And we thank you right now, Jesus, that you are showing forth even through the internet ways, even through just in person, person to person interaction. We thank you right now, God. Father, we just pray right now for my family. We pray for our friends and we just thank you tonight, God. You get the glory, the honor and the praise. Let me know that you're on tonight, guys. We stay connected. We are one body. We are one soul. We are one mind. And it does not matter where it comes from. It all comes from the eternal realm, the almighty king. So I want to say thank you guys for getting on with me tonight. This is a, a powerful, powerful session that we're going to have. Um, many of you know Marcus Rogers, uh, like I said, from just the internet. And he's just a humble, mighty man of God. And God has entrusted him with so much that he was able to just soar in just his, uh, you know, his military career. And God just took him out of another direction. Uh, um, I got his email about a month and a half ago through Facebook, and I uh, I said, um, Lord, put it in my heart that eventually me and Marcus were going to do an interview on Primal Man of God. And I was like, okay. I said, you know, me thinking at the time, I said, I know he's a busy man. I allow, I allow my mind to get in the way. He's a busy individual. I probably won't get in, in touch, but I'm going to give it a shot. So I did it by faith. He get, he uh, gave me his email, and so I reached out to him when it was time, um, and just we just pretty much hit it off. And while as I was praying to figure out uh, what to what would be the topic of tonight was the man and his power. Um, I think this is a, a very relevant uh, relevant topic of discussion. So many times. People lose their power. They forget where their power comes from. Their power, their power comes from. And so, one of those things that we need to uh, talk about is where the power comes from, um, versus uh, the human spirit versus the Holy Spirit. And so many times, as individuals, 
there is an extent to your power as a human being and your human spirit, but there is an unlimited supply in connection with the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to talk about the differentiations between that. I have a series of questions to ask Marcus. Um, and so it's going to be powerful. So um, I want to um, just read our mission and our vision statement very quickly. Many of you may know this. Many of you may not. But our, our vision is very simple. A society of men that embodies the true Adam to expand to expand kingdom living on earth and to create godly order in all aspects of life. Men who are serious about establishing God's plan to better communities, families, marriages, businesses, people, and more. And our mission is simple, guys. We teach, train, and empower men to become the Adam that God has called them to be. This is very straightforward. I believe that this ministry, like this platform, is extremely important to have men to be trained and to be encouraged and to help one another to become the best uh, the best man that they're called to be in God, because all of it is important to have the foundation uh, of men being in place in that rightful place in that rightful position to be uh, to be to be utilized the way they need to be. So I want to say thank you. Let me know you're on with me tonight uh, before we get started. Um, if Marcus, if you um, if you in, you can go ahead and click the uh, the, the button to chime on inside. And I can go ahead and accept your request. Um, like I say, guys, this is most definitely uh, an amazing a brother, an amazing man of God. Um, I'm excited just to have a conversation with him and to uh, bring him on into this discussion about the man and his power. Amen. How you doing, sir? Praise the Lord, brother. Let me let me make sure I turn it up real quick. I can hear you real good. <clears throat> can you see me pretty good? Can you see me? Yes, sir. Awesome. Yes, sir. Marcus, man, I want to say again, it's an honor, bro. Just as a a brother to another brother, a, a man to another man, it's just an honor to see another warrior and to like just join mm -hmm. our, our our gear our, our battle gear together and just kind of moving in the same direction. So this is a just. Awesome to have you on here, just to have this discussion. I thought this would be the perfect topic, and Holy Spirit just brought it all together. So I'm going to say thank Amen. you again for getting on here. And guys, if you're on, share, like, and invite. I think this is a powerful topic to impact every individual that's on tonight. Um, and so, yeah, I want to say thanks uh, again. So, Marcus, you know, I, I tell everybody before I, I get started, um, I always ask every individual just something that God has put on their heart. What is something this past week, just something that you have just been meditating on, something that you've been thinking about this week that you just want to share with us? Um, well, actually, God has kind of been just dealing with me, um, you know, about relationships. That's the okay. biggest thing that's probably destroying the, the church overall is just mm. improper relationships, getting involved with, you know, the wrong people. A lot of it has to do with, you know, not knowing who you are as a man, not knowing, you know, who you are as a woman. And so actually today um, I was doing some exercise at the gym because I've been I kind of got kind of fat, man. Was, Bro, <laughs> you know, hey, I, I just got a membership <laughs> today. I just, bro, I got all the way out of shape. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. So, yeah, we, I, was, I was slacking, man, because, you know, getting out the army and stuff. So yeah. I started to feel that weight get on me just out of nowhere. And um, the enemy been attacking me like last, maybe the last two years very hard. And so as I was out there running and stuff, I could feel the difference. It wasn't like when I was running like six or seven months ago. I could mm -hmm. feel the weight was making a difference. And so I began to think about how, like, when we're not spiritually strong and investing in the spirit, man, you know, that allows different kind of weight to get off, get, get on us in the spirit. You know, you can yeah. get a, a weight of depression. You can get a weight of, of bitterness, you know, because you didn't lift that unforgiveness off of you yeah. or you didn't lift your Bible and read the words. So because of that, you know, your, your spirit, man, starts to get heavy. And then uh, the verse God gave me was a uh, first Timothy four and eight. It says, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has a value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and life to come. So, you know, it's good to work out that, that physical man, that physical body, 
but a lot of times we're lacking because we ain't working that spirit, man, like we should, you know, in the, the relationship that we have with God. And because, you know, we don't pass certain tests that he puts in front of us, we never gain the spiritual muscle. You know, we never say, you know, Lord, I'm going to trust you through this. And yeah. I always tell people, you, you got to go through the wilderness to get to the promised land. Joseph had to go through the pit and the prison to get to the palace. So, you know, sometimes you just got to embrace those hard times and don't let that dictate, you know, if you're going to lift that Bible, you know, if you're going to lift your hands and things like that. Absolutely. Bro, bro you, hit, you hit it on the head, man, about uh, physical <laughs> um, workout. It has some benefit. And, it, and, and that's where it stops at. It has some benefit, some value. You know, one of the things you just kind of hit on the head about relationships. One of the things I've been kind of molding over is the human spirit versus the Holy Spirit. And God's been showing me just in relational, from a relational standpoint, where how so many people depend on each other in relationship, um, you know, and depend on each other just to get things done. You understand, like, that dynamic. I understand. But not having the balance of, depending on God more than they depend on each other. You know, one of the things right. I talk about with me and my wife, she always tell people when we have like a topic, she said, I don't rely on my husband for nothing. She said, he don't make me. He don't, he don't, he don't, uh, <laughs> he don't, what you say there? You said he don't make me. Yeah, she's like, he don't make me. So I was like, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's just me being an assistant, being a help to her and just doing life with her as a partner, but more so, understanding my power doesn't come from my wife, even though it may be like right. an assistant or like a carrier or helping me. It's like my main ingredient is Jesus Christ. And I think that's right. the, the downfall of a lot of relationships in all aspects, business. I mean, family, you know, marriage, girlfriend, boyfriend, all that stuff. They put their whole entire being inside of a, something that has a, a beginning and an end versus something that, is eternal which we are created out of which is being eternal beings so my wife always says that so that that's something i've been thinking about all the time just like you know they're wearing tear on each other versus coming together and um you know just depending on god for everything all your needs so, yeah, well, when, when, we, when you get dependent on anybody else the way that i've always viewed it that's the equivalent to me of, you know, you having an idol in your life. And, you know, the Lord says, you have no other gods before me. I always tell people, I say, sometimes your relationship might be going bad, not because it wasn't meant to be, but because you made that person an idol. So, wow. you know, every time, you know, you depend on them so hard that you don't put God out the picture. You know, you don't, you don't pray to him. You go vent to your spouse. You depend yes, on your spouse to make you happy. You depend on your boyfriend. To make, mm -hmm. And not only that, if go they're ahead. not treating you right, it dictates your worship and it affects your relationship with God. Wow. So it reminds me of the, uh, the story with the the Philistines when they took the uh, Ark of the Covenant. Yes, and, you sir. Know, they put it in their little temple and they had that uh, the statue Dagon. And every yeah. morning they walked in there, that idol had failed, you know, in front of the, the Ark of the Covenant. And they picked it up and dusted it off and tried to put it back up yep. and it fell again. That's what we do in relationships. Like we keep making them an idol and God keeps allowing them to fail us. And it's going to keep going through that pattern until he gets our attention. It's not, wow. it's not even that, you know, you're in the wrong relationship. The Lord is Absolutely. like, look, I'm trying to show you that I'm the only one that's never going to fail you. First of all, Don't you know, your this. spouse can't mm -hmm. complete you anyway. They, they're just there to compliment what I'm doing in your life. That's all they're there to do is to compliment you, not complete you. And that's where people get it wrong. They're looking for people to do God's job. And that's why God's sitting there like, okay. I'm going to let you make mm -hmm. a mess of it until you learn that I'm God. <laughs> They're not God, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> Don't put any other gods before me, for sure. So, man, yes, I'll, um, yeah, I'll jump right into the questions. Um, uh, uh, you know, the, the man in his power. I thought this is a, a great conversation uh, about just having a conversation about the man in his power and how many times it has been sniped away from him. Um, and not knowing where it comes from. They put it in their muscles. They put it in their, their mind. They put it in their ability. But they don't put it in God. They don't know where it comes from. So my first question to ask you, uh, uh, Marcus, is what does it truly mean for a man to tap into his power? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind, and I, did, I didn't read all your questions. I read the last one because I just was yeah. like, Lord, I want to let the spirit. No, I don't like to have, you know, have it scripted and stuff like that. 
But um, the first thing that just came to my mind is Adam. You know, when the Lord the Lord shaped them out of out of dust. So mm-hmm. right there, we see that God gave man a frame, mm-hmm. and once He gave him a frame, then He breathed on him. You know, so the first thing is, you know, you you, you got to have a, a framework for your life, something that God mm-hmm. can, can can breathe on. You know, and that just really means just being an empty vessel because you know now. Mm-hmm. The New Testament, we're filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, so we have the Holy Spirit and that's really what empowers us. So it kind of goes back to what we said in order for you to really tap into the power that's in the Holy Spirit. It's it's like uh, if you have one bowl of soup, you know, and you're hungry. So every day you can take that bowl of soup Mm -hmm. and that's your time, that's your energy, whatever it is. And you can feed it to your spirit, man, or you can feed it to your flesh, man. So you could sit there and you could feed your your flesh man watching Netflix all day, chasing mm-hmm. women all day, lifting weights. So that's going that's gonna make your flesh feel good, make yeah. your muscles chase after your job. That's gonna give you some money, maybe a little status, but it's not gonna feed that spirit man. And if you don't feed that spirit man, one of them two things is gonna die out. So if you ain't reading your Bible, you ain't fasting, you ain't doing things to build your spirit man. You're never going to tap into that that power that uh that you get through the Holy Spirit, and that's the key to unlocking it. Is basically relationship with God. And one thing I'll mm-hmm. say quickly: what I always tell people, I say, right. God created relationship. He created everything. So relationship mm-hmm. is something that that He created that He wants with us. So you know, as a if you're a married man and you have a wife, and you know you don't flirt with her, you don't talk to her, you don't compliment her. You don't spend no time with her. And then wow. you want to come home and, and be intimate with her. Mm. She ain't going to be trying to. She's Absolutely. not going to feel that. Absolutely. But we do the same thing to God. We wow. don't talk to him. We don't worship him. We don't, we don't spend no time with him. We don't read the word. We don't tell him thank you for waking us up. But then as soon as we need him, we ring the little bell and treat him like a butler. Like, oh, I, well, I need you to help me out right now because I'm struggling yeah. with this and I'm struggling. That's not relationship with God. Wow. And that's why that's so many men genie in the bottle. Tapped into, tapped into power. Mm. No, you, you <laughs> absolutely hit it, Marcus. It's like a genie in a bottle trying to treat God like just rub real quick and make three wishes. So it, it doesn't work. It turns into something completely different. Um, yeah, it just what comes to me too, just thinking and just piggybacking off what you say, bro. It's following the spirit leads to life, but following the flesh or investing into it leads to death. So eventually, what you put in, what you put into it, I think we lost him. What you put into it uh, leads to uh, death. Let me get him back on here. Spirit twins. <laughs> Let me get you back on here, Marcus. I think we lost him. There we go. I'm getting him back on here. My bad, bro. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, it's all good. So yeah, investing, investing into to the spirit. You said what? I panicked for a minute. I thought I pressed the button or something. I was like, that was good. Now that was good. Just, just, just. Just piggybacking off what you said, treating God like a genie in the bottle, trying to make three wishes, and then then you're done. You go to you what they go to church like three times a year. You got Easter, you uh they go to church. Uh, oh, what you say? Christmas time. I mean, bro, in New Year's, that's three times. That's three wishes right there. Mm-hmm. Treating God like a, a genie in the bottle, making three wishes, and then for the rest of the year, you're struggling and trying to figure out how to live. Um, and church is so important. The, that's where you like, don't forsake the, for, you know, the, the, the assembly of the brethren because that's what's needed. That's what builds that community, reinforces right. the culture of Christ, reinforces kingdom understanding. Like you need that in order to move forward. So I, people that's listening on here, you know, invest into your future. Practical information, you know, says like, if you want to work out, like you got to go to the gym, you got to sacrifice the time, you got to put in the hours in order to see muscle. Same thing with God, same thing with life. You got to put in the time, you got to sacrifice, right? You got to give up some stuff. Um, my next question, Marcus, I could ask you is why aren't enough men 
tapping into that power? Well, one thing that I really liked that you just said um, about the church, mm -hmm. if you look at, you know, one thing people like to say on my Facebook page, they say, oh, he, he got a lot of women followers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I always, I always ask them, I say, what church have you been to where there's more men than women, first of all? Mm. You know, that's, that's one of the problems right there is that men aren't in the church. And the reason that is a lot of times is because men have pride and they don't want to, they don't want to, um, you know, to submit to nobody and nobody to have authority over them. And now the Bible says iron sharp is iron. And it's funny what you mentioned. First Peter five and five says, and the same way you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. Mm. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. You got to be humble as a man wow. to go to church. You know what I'm saying? Actually submit yourself. See, a lot of people, they go to church. Yeah. And I've been going to church my whole life, but they don't really, they don't really connect. It's just more something that they do. When I lived in Virginia, I went to a church, man, and I thought it was so powerful. You know, we went to church on Sunday, but yeah. Wednesdays, they had a, a women's group. So the women would meet. They broke the church up into different groups. And the women would meet at women's houses and they would rotate, break bread and just talk about women stuff and have like a little devotional. And the men would meet on Thursdays. It's like we could sit there and it was more than just going to church mm -hmm. and, you know, lifting your hands, getting more yeah. the music. But most, most men ain't even going to do that. that <laughs> that's a whole nother. Most men don't even worship. You know, you just go there and, and just sit there. Sit and there like you too manly to worship and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That, that's the first problem. You know, the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. So people, you sit yes. there like, it, it, it's, so, it's so disrespectful, like, yeah. for you to go. The guy who woke you up in the morning and you too macho to lift your hands. <laughs> and you, too, you look at what happened with David. When David yeah. danced the way that he did and his wife was hating on him, you know what I'm saying? David yeah. was dancing like that out of respect for who God was. And something God showed me the other day, he says, son, they don't appreciate me. There's a verse in the Bible that says, uh, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Yes, sir. And what he showed me, he said, he said a lot of people hang out in the courts and they hang mm. out in the gates, but they never come into the holies of holies. Meaning wow. they hang out in the courts and, the, you know, the church, you know, we got to, they sing two songs. Yeah. You might, might mouth a couple of the words you see on the projector. You might even say amen when the preacher preach. Yeah. But other than Sunday experience, you never actually go into the holies of holies and spend time with the Lord. Actually sit there and pray until you actually break through and God can change some things about wow. you and put some things inside of you. But a lot of us are so full of ourselves. Wow. There's no room for God to pour anything in. And so that's what he, and he said. He says, son, you know what's crazy? It's disrespectful because... When I died, mm -hmm. the veil was torn. You know, he said it was finished. Yeah. So oh, back in the day, only the high priest could go into the holies of holies. Wow. He, he, when he died, he tore the veil and he said, look, the high priest used to go back in there, sacrifice for everybody's sins. But when I died and the veil was torn, you can come boldly before the throne of God. You can be jacked up. You can mess up. You can sin yesterday. You mm -hmm. don't have to be perfect. And you can still come into the holies of holies into my, my presence. But a lot of us, a lot of us that we don't do that. We have a, a casual relationship. And I always I say, wow. man, casual Christians going to be casual to you. Wow. Wow. You, you know, one thing you say, Marcus, about this scripture is like entering to his courts with thanksgiving and to his gates with praise. One of the things that just stood out to me is like entering the process of you going in, you already giving God glory. So people going to church, yes, looking sir. to church for my, my fix me up. When you need to be already into overflow before you even step into it, step into the pew. So it's like I'm waiting for that feeling, like I'm waiting for the feeling. I'm trying to get full of, and then it becomes an emotional experience versus a spiritual right. experience with your heavenly Father. So it becomes more than just uh, it becomes emotionalism. And so now the devil has used the device because we, you know, this Marcus, the enemy uses the devices, tactics, and wiles. He don't have no strength. He has no power. Right. The power he takes from you is by using strategy against you. So he makes you go to a concert. Right. He'll let you go to church, listen to the good music, and you think that's God. When it doesn't nope. have nothing to do with emotion, it has everything to do with mindset. It has everything Man. to do with your spirit. So you have to already go into the service to be on fire. 
if he called you a living, breathing epistle, that means you have to already be on fire walking into the assembly of your brother and sisters. And so the reason why religion is so prevalent, bro, is because people are walking in following a oil, oil machine called religion, and they're walking the process out and going to church, doing their duty, becoming, they either deacons, they p pastors, leaders, I don't care what they are, and they go do that thing and then go uh, Saturday through, uh, you know, going back up to Sunday, figuring out how to live life and don't know how to take the power from the church and live it when the church not even the building. It's you in the first place. And so hey, you hit it on the head. It's like entering into. So you go into service already on fire. Like, man, I already had like my most powerful, your most powerful moment should not be in church. Your most powerful moment should be in the closet. Your most powerful moment with God should be in your bedroom, laying on the floor, like sprawl, sprawl out, and you share that experience with others so they can continue to feel that. So I, I now, agree bro, with you totally, bro. That, that, that one thing that you said is that the problem we have in church is like people come to church for like a motivational thing. Like they, they come to church and we got to pump them up to praise. Pump, you know you, have, you you know how this is. You know, church and the praise team person, and they're trying to get people to praise the Lord. Think of, really think about that. We serve the creator of this universe, the one who's putting breath in your lungs every day, the one who's never left you, never forsake you, the one who put nail. You know, he died on the cross. He never, ever got to do anything else for me. And, you know, I can go to any church, brother. I've been all over the world. I can go to a South Korean church, not understand what they're saying, and I can get my worship on. Absolutely. I can go to a Jamaican church. I've been to white, redneck, hillbilly church. It don't yeah. matter because I... The spirit of God is it's in insane. me and I worship God because of who he is. And this is why the Bible yeah. says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, brother, they think that faith is let me put my hands on somebody, right? Wow. And, and, and pray and a headache going to go away. But wow. real faith is let me forgive my mom or my daddy when they did me wrong, even wow. though I don't think they deserve it. You can wow. pray for a headache, but you can't forgive your brother and sister. You know, wow. you can you can believe God for a miracle, but you can't be a peacemaker, man. And that's and that's real faith. Real wow. faith is I don't have to sit here for the praise team to pump me up. I can worship be worship God because of who he is, wow. because he's sitting on the throne, because of what his word said. He said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. So I worship him because I believe that. He said no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So I worship him because I believe that. I worship yes, him God. because what he did on the cross. I worship him because, yes, what God. you know, he brought me out of sin. I know you. I know you know, brother, and I know how he's I used to fire, be. Bro. And I know, and you know, we get so complacent, and that because of that, man, we don't even have a respect for God, but we want his blessings. We don't even have a res respect enough to worship him, you know, but we want the anointing. Wow. See, that's the problem with modern day church, brother. Wow. They want the blessings, but they don't want the sacrifice. They want the crown, but they don't want the cross. And that's why people get mad when you start talking about, yeah. you know, sacrifice. And you know what's so crazy? If you look at Jesus, mm -hmm. when he was preaching miracles and, and he was feeding the, the 5,000, yeah. feeding everybody. Yeah. He had thousands of people following him. But as soon as he started talking about <laughs> get him back on, Mike. We got him. I'm gonna get him back on here. Why did he turn I don't know what happened. I'm gonna get him back on here. As soon as he started talking about, about that, brother, they uh and he had to go to the cross. Not even yeah. all of the twelve disciples followed Jesus to the cross. Yeah. I let you know the Bible says broad is the way that leads to destruction, narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. A lot of people going to church and doing all that stuff, going through the motions, they ain't making it in, bro. Bro, right that's the, you know the scariest thing is the reprobate mindset. You just like you know, God said, "I'm gonna give you over to, I'm gonna give you over to your mind." Like the scariest thing that that terrifies me the most that people are having real experiences that is nowhere Holy Ghost filled found in any of it. And God says no. in the scripture, like, I will give you over to your own devices and, and let you believe your own itching ears, like what you want to hear for your life. Like, like you said, casual Christians create casualties, like right. limping with, with soreness. And that, and that gunshot wounds turn into gangrene. And that impacts the whole body. So then you're trying mm. to have, hide your relationship from God, but that same thing is connected to everything in your life. And so you like got gangrene in your relationship and not knowing that it's affecting your whole entire life, even your relationship with him. So people trying to put on makeup, 
um, so to speak, trying to put, trying to make face and trying to keep their heart covered and don't know how to mm. be transparent because they have been trained by church how to cover up, come in, wear your title, put on your hat, open up your word, read the Bible, and go home yes, and sir. still suffer and dealing with suicide, dealing with drugs and alcohol, and can't open up to nobody because you you have these 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 sayings like don't trust nobody. Uh you you, you can forgive but don't forget. Like these are demonic uh sayings that people yes, believe really in their heart and don't believe God like forgive and it's thrown in the sea of forgiveness. Like it is it is dangerous to know that people are going to church and still not knowing God 50, 60 years, sitting in the pew, keeping a bench warm and not and not experiencing the almighty presence of God. And then when they and then when they get there and then when they get there, we're getting back on here. It, it's just uh, it's just it's just it's just some it's crazy. Let me get you back on here, Marcus. So uh, yes, sir. I can uh move back into uh move into the next question. Why I got you on here? Um, uh, what are some steps into moving forward to get to that place of empowerment? I kind of we kind of were talking about it. But what are some steps into moving forward to get to that place of empowerment? Men, women, everybody that's watching, what are what are those steps? What do they look like, Mark? Well, uh, for me, um, what God kind of showed me, and I always think about Joseph, one of the things that you said, like people go to church, right? They run around, they dance, they shout, and then they pretty much leave the same way they came in. Yeah. And I always tell people that when you really have a made up mind that, uh, you know, I'm going to live for the Lord and I'm going to find out, you know, what he what he has called for me. I'm yeah. going to stop worrying about living paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, the Bible says acknowledge God in all your what ways is, and yes. he will direct your path. Absolutely. This is why a lot of people never tap in. We don't, we don't acknowledge God when it comes to who we date. We don't acknowledge God what we should study in school. We don't we don't acknowledge none of those things. And that's why a lot of people don't have a blessed life. He says. I know the very number of hairs of, uh, on your head. Absolutely. You know, so I know what's best for you. I know you better than you know you. So if you would acknowledge me, I would show you the route to go to be blessed. So the first thing is you got to go to God and get the blueprint mm. through relationship and let him show you. But a lot of people, they don't do that. Well, uh, most Christians do mm. is they just follow their feelings. I feel like dating her. Wow. I feel like going to college for this. And then after it doesn't work out or they have a midlife crisis or a couple babies in a divorce, then that's when they want to bring God in the picture because they want him to clean it up. Wow. And if they had acknowledged him in the first place, if they had the relationship, Lord, which way do you want? Do you want me to go to that college? Is it okay if I give that guy my wow. phone number? You know, if we did it that way, we would have a blessed life, but we don't do that. We usually wait till life gets messy and then it's like, all right, I got to get right yeah, to the Lord and things like that. And, uh, what happens is when you get a real, real one thing my mama said to me that it, it hurt my feelings, but it was probably the one of the statements that changed my life. I was a little bit older. She said, boy, don't even talk to me. You don't even have a real relationship with the Lord. Wow. And I and it hurt. It hurt. But then when I thought about it and I like we talked about in the beginning of the video, what is a real relationship? Yeah. A relationship. I'm, I'm, if, the, if it's a healthy relationship, we talking, mm -hmm. you know, often spending time together often you know and so when i thought about that i was like okay so the first thing is to have a real ask yourself do i have a real relationship with god wow and when you start having a relationship with god that you got to understand that the enemy's going to attack you jesus said take up your cross not your vacation packet a lot of believers think that being a christian they're not gonna have to fight nothing Bro, they're never gonna have to the bible says the bible says count it not strange when you go through the fiery trial when you when you give your life to the lord the enemy's looking at you as a threat if you really... See, he don't care if you read the Bible, but... Sheesh. Yeah, that's that's crazy. We're going to get him back on here. Um, the, God does not want this to happen. We're going to get him on here, though. <coughs> I don't know what, what, that, what hey, that's going on. It to don't me. even matter. We're going to move forward. Act like we're not going to get that no energy. We ain't not going to even get that no energy at all. It's all good. Yeah. But um, so when you get a real relationship with God yeah. and he starts to really set you on fire, the, the way you get set on fire, Lord, anoint me right now to speak this exactly right. Lord. When he sets you on fire through relationship with him is because once you get serious about him, the enemy is going to start attacking you. Uh -huh. 
because he don't want you to tap into your potential. He don't want you to get on fire because fire is contagious. If you tap into everything that God is calling you to be, you're going to start affecting the people around you. So there's going to be like a chain reaction. So the enemy's like, I got to stop you. I got to steal your dream. I got to steal your motivation. You got to steal your fire, steal your joy. That's why when people, they can have watch Netflix eight hours, open their Bible to read a chapter, they start falling asleep right what? away, you know, because, because it's a fight. So through relationship with God, he's going to show you. He's going to like, this is the vision that I have, like Joseph. He yes. gave Joseph a clear vision, and Joseph was like, okay, bet. But then the next thing you know, Joseph got thrown in a dark pit. Yeah. First the vision was clear, then he's in a dark pit. That's because God will put a seed inside of you, but mm. in order for a seed to grow, sometimes it has to be buried, you know, mm. and you put it in the ground. So the way that we get buried and we die to the flesh, God gives us the vision, mm. and then he says, now I'm going to prepare you for what I'm, where I'm going to take you. So now I'm going to put Come on, God. This is getting good. Continue to share, like, and invite, guys. Uh, continue to share, like, and invite. Amen. Devil attacks to stop potential. Wow. Somebody said the devil stops to attack potential. That was powerful. Uh, you, you know, Marcus, one of the things I wanted to say, um, um, God put on my heart, he said, he said, trust me even when you're scared. Because that's what mm -hmm. counts. Um, he's just saying, trust me when you're scared um, and say, and consulting God before you make a move. And say, like you said, trust in, uh, lean not onto your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge me and I will direct your path. Well, if you don't lean on your own understanding, that's talking about logic, your own plans, your own, your own strategy, your own relationships, your own choosing. And mm -hmm. it's so hard, uh, like you said, to, uh, it is a fight. It is, it is combative. It is warfare. And so many Christians, or even casual Christians, I would say more than anything, have not been prepared to fight or understanding their position to stand or to be like, you know what, I'm going to defy the eyes of, even though I wrote this out and I put so much time, energy, and attention, God said, ball it up and throw it out. God said, ball it up and throw it out. And you like, no, I put so much time and attention into this and I, and I just don't, and I don't know if I should do that. So it's uh it's really important it's just really it's just really important mark is just to 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 have that ground and just like not leaning on your own understanding but trusting him with everything even when you're scared because when you get to the end of yourself you get to the beginning of god when you get to the end of your ways right. you get the beginning of god i'm gonna uh jump into this next question man uh those that feel weak right now and don't feel empowered what can you say to that person um well the first thing i'll say is um if you really want to be used by god john f kennedy said he said don't pray for uh easy lives pray to be stronger men so the lord put that cross on you for a reason you know and you might feel weak and you might be weary but a lot of times to be honest god wants you to be weak so you can be humble wow so he can say look it's, it's, I'm going to allow you to go through what you're going through so you can know it wasn't because you were so good, because you were so strong, because you were so talented, because you were so holy. I told, I, I, God gave me this sermon the, like last week. I said, you have an appointment with failure. Wow. And people don't really understand what I was saying. But, you know, when Jesus came down to Peter, he had been fishing all night. I ain't catch no fish. Yeah. Those fishermen, you know, they would fish at night because that's, that's how professional fishermen do. They ain't get no fish. Jesus told him to cast the net to the other side. He did. You know the story. They got the fish. Yeah. God allowed the, the, the fish not to show up at night so he could show Peter a miracle. The same thing with the Garden of Eden. The Bible says it's not God's will that any should perish. But why, if the Lord is the all-knowing, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, knows the beginning from the end, why would he put a tree in the garden knowing they was going to fail? Mm. knowing that it was going to give him the temptation. Wow. Sometimes he knows in, in our weakness, he's like, look, now you don't eat from the tree. Yeah. Let me show you something. I knew you was going to eat from the tree. Let me show you how much I love you. Let me show you that the, even though you did this, I'll come and I'll die and, and, and I'll lay down my life, you know, and I'll give my only son for it. That's how much I love you in your mess, in your weakness. I'm trying to show you that I can be your strength. 
and your brokenness. I'm, I always tell people, how would you know that God was a healer if you've never been sick before? Wow. How would you know that God was a provider if you've never been broke before? So that's why when, when you're in those weak moments, look to the Lord. The Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love him. Not some things, not some. It says all things. When you're going through a bad season, mm. a weak season, a season when you feel like giving up, don't don't sit there and talk yourself out of the fight. The Lord is fighting battles for you that you don't even got no idea about sometimes. You know, if you look at the story with Job, Satan and, uh, and God was having a conversation about Job that Job didn't even know about. Wow. You know, and the Lord was already working on uh, Job's behalf. So when you're in the valley, Psalms 23, you're in that dark valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, yes. I fear no evil. Amen. You don't have to fear no evil. The other part of that verse says he's preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Whatever okay. your enemy is, whatever it is, eventually if you hold on through that weak, that weak phase, you're going to come out the other side and there's going to be a table that the Lord has prepared for you with blessings wow. and increase. And you're going to eat in front of your haters. You're going to eat in front of everybody who doubted you. Yeah. You're going to eat in front of all the Judases, everybody who did you dirty, that boss, that for whatever it is that's making you weak, mm. you're going to have the victory. But what you have to remember in that weak moment. Just hold on to that, Marcus. Don't forget your thought. This is powerful. Share, like, and invite. Don't forget that thought. That's That's good. You say in that weak moment. You was talking about in that weak moment. Finish that thought you were saying, Marcus. This was that was powerful. Oh, just just remember that that he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So I, I was I would say that. Don't expect yeah. to win the battle if you don't ever pick up the sword. The word of God mm -hmm. is your sword. Ninety nine percent of the battle you fighting is in your mind. From the beginning of time, Satan, just like the Lord works, he plants seeds. Satan planted a seed in Eve's mind, which affected her perspective, which caused her wow. to sin. Satan will plant a seed in your mind to discourage you, to distract you, to defeat you, to condemn you, to keep your eyes off your destiny, to keep your eyes off of, you know, having the joy of the Lord or whatever it is. And you got to realize, mm -hmm. well, I can sit here and entertain these negative thoughts and, and talk mm -hmm. and think to a depression or... I can pick up the word of God and start cutting down them wicked imaginations and them wicked thoughts wow. from the enemy. A lot of people are losing the battle because they ain't picking up the sword. You got to hide the word of God in your heart. How are you going to fight without a sword? <laughs> um, you know, Marcus, one thing you said that really, really stood out to me is about eating in front of your Judases. I'm sure that Jesus was well aware, very well aware about Judas way before he turned on him. And oh, he yeah. still let Judas break bread with him. He still allowed Judas to understand some of the things that were happening. He still kept them close. And so um, it, it, that just showed me that, that the hardship that you go through or the turmoil or the situation you go through was always designed to take you to the cross to multiply you. So if Judas was never there in the first place, how could the, the Roman armies come and take him to the cross to die for our sins? And so we sometimes look at our, our, our bad things as, uh, as like we need to keep it away. When God was like, no, I need to take you through the fire so I can remove the dross and get you refined. Like it's, yeah. it's important to embrace the, even the talks about it in, um, in First James about your hardships and about those things, those, those trials and tribulations that perfect the more mature man that you're called to be. But so many people don't want to go through the fire or so many people don't want to jump off the deep end or even go through something they know they're going to be persecuted about. Persecution and all this is a, is a part of us. I, I've met so many people, they was like, man, I got saved and my life got harder. I was like, well, <laughs> my life got harder. I was like, well, you were on, on the enemy's hit list because now that now that you are the light of the world and that you are the salt of the earth, it is it is so much more uh, you are so much more a target than when you were living in the world. You know, you won't have as many problems when you're already trapped than when you're free. It's just like if you're free, you're gonna have the masters chasing chasing you through the woods. They're gonna mm -hmm. they're gonna hunt you down. So it's like, you know, you have to be aware of that. Like that's a part of the lifestyle. Um, well, one of the one of the first videos I ever did, it might have been the first video I ever did. It was like five years ago. 
uh, yeah. I, the, it was it was something to the fact like, are you are you the devil's punchline? And you know, it's talking about how right. um, the devil ain't gonna attack. The devil is not gonna bother you if you're not tapping into your destiny and prayer. He'll let you go to church and dance and shout as Tell long him. as your life ain't changing, as long as your light ain't shining. He don't mind you being religious. He might, he, he, see, I tell people we're not saved to be silent. He, he mind when you start trying to walk in your destiny. He mind when you start trying to take dominion and authority that, that God has given you. You know, he'll let you go through religious motions and things like that. But when you have a made up mind, he's like, nah, you know, it's, it's like he don't take you serious. Like you say you're a Christian, but you a joke to him. You're so much of a joke to him that, he don't, you know, those Christians, they don't go through nothing and that. It's because if you ain't going through nothing as a Christian, you ain't living to your full potential. You know, it's right. like it's like one of these big rappers, you know, one of these young guys trying to start some beef with him. I'm not paying no attention to, attention to you. You're not that serious. You can't affect me. You can't. I'm not even going to yeah. entertain you. That's how the devil feels. Like, you a joke to me. You know, like, I'm not worried about you. If you if you really start trying to get after it, he's going to try to shut you down. Absolutely. Um. I have the, uh, oh, we answered number four. So I got the fifth question. Um, Marcus, I want to ask you, what does it mean to you to be a primal man of God? What does that, how, how do you uh, internalize that? Uh, for me, the, the primal, you know, the definition, you know, a lot of people think like the first man. So obviously I think about Adam and, um, one of the biggest things that I look at the story of Adam is when God created Adam, he, uh, he gave Adam a destiny. He gave Adam a purpose. He gave Adam a job. He gave Adam instructions wow. before he wow. ever gave him a wife. And then, of course, wow. Adam had a relationship with God. So if you look in, if you look in the Bible, um, you know, the Lord would walk in the garden and pretty much his spirit would speak to them like it was nothing back then. Same thing with Cain yeah. when he slew his brother. Like the Lord just spoke to him like straight up. That was normal back in the time. So that lets me know that from the beginning of time, God, it was always wow. in God's mind for us to be a, a reflection of him. So he, God, everything he made, he said it was good. You know, so mm -hmm. that, that let any man know that at the bare minimum, if God, what God's design is for a man, is for a man to have relationship with God, for a man to have purpose, yeah. for a man who gave him dominion in the garden, he gave him authority in the garden yeah. to go name the animal, he gave Adam a job. You know, at the bare minimum, a man has a relationship with God, he has a destiny, he has a vision for his life, you know, he has a purpose, mm -hmm. he has a job. That's, that's bare minimum. And then once wow. you get that foundation, you can tap into the anointing and, and the supernatural. So a lot of guys, you know, the reason why we have so many broken homes and stuff like that is because we're trying to skip, you know, steps. So it's like, I want mm. to uh, get a wife, but I'm 19. I don't even know who I am as a man. I don't even know what God's will is for my life. So if I don't know God's will for my life, I'm not going to know what type of woman to marry because she's supposed to be a helpmate. What is she going to yeah. help? She can't be a help me to a deadbeat. So if I don't have yeah. a destiny, I don't know in what direction God is taking me. And I learned this what the hard way. Help? Like, mm. say, say, say God's calling you to be an evangelist, but you was just talking, before you knew that, you just was focused on getting a relationship. So you got with this girl, and then when she finds out, oh, now you want to be an evangelist, I don't want that kind of life. I don't want to be wow. traveling around. I don't want to do that. So now you're mad because she's not supporting you and things like that. And that's where a lot of people get themselves in trouble because God has an order to do it. Let me give you a purpose. Wow. Let me give you a relationship with me. Let me wow. give you a destiny and a vision. Then I bring in a woman to complement all of that. You know? Wow. But that's when that's most men get it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it, like, here, ladies, you heard it, and I totally agree with that. Man has a responsibility before he even gets you. I see, I have seen even my, personally, men want to pursue ministry before they even take care of that responsibility. Like, you want to do all this stuff. You have the wrong motive of heart of going into ministry. You have the wrong motive of heart before you do anything. You have, like, a backwards pyramid. Like, you try to build it with the smallest 
uh, block versus the largest one, which is right. the responsibility of man. So you heard it. Uh, responsibility before he even gets you. If you have no vision, what are you going to help? What is she going to help you assist you with? Because if it's a helpmate, that means she's either more intelligent than you to help you with something that's that it, she has to be complimentary to like what you're doing. Like she has to be there to help you and assist you in ways like that. Um, Marcus, I want to say, bro, I want to say thank you for getting on here, man. It is a true pleasure, bro. Um, just just sh just sharing your time with me, man. I know you're a busy guy, so I want to say thank you uh, again for that. Um, do you have any like any events coming up anywhere you're traveling to that people may want to come and just fellowship or you know just hear you, you know, you know, speak or things like that? Um, right now I got a couple here and there. I've got one in California and one in Florida. My main focus right now is getting out of the Army, so if everybody can be praying for me for that. I already had my uh, separation board, so I'm just waiting for the final date where they're like, okay, you can pack up, you can move. Then I'm going to move back to Chicago, and I believe that uh, I know, I want to say I believe, I know God is telling me to open a church, uh, so I'm going to call it Firehouse. And uh, I don't know, I really don't know how everything's going to go. I'm still looking yeah. at, you know, work, what kind of jobs I'm going to work. I would like to go into full-time ministry. That's why I'm writing the books and stuff like that. But uh, right now, yeah. I'm, just, I'm waiting to see what happens. So um, just be praying for me that the Lord leads me, directs me. And, you know, because humans, we can mess it up. I don't want to be in my feelings yes, about sir. anything. I just want to – I want to. I want every move that I make for the Lord to be like, you know, that's what I'm talking about. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that pretty much. Do you have any material that people may be – or at this time, or want to uh, donate to your ministry? Available? I, I didn't. It kind of broke up a little bit, brother. I didn't hear that last part. Do you have any material, like you know, books, or even a, a website or a link to where people uh -huh. may want to donate, or even just invest into you what you're doing? Um, the, the book is uh, Through the Fire to Be on Fire. That's on Amazon. And then some people, they uh, send donations sometimes to PayPal. That's just my email address, um, Royal Ruckus with the number four, Christ at Yahoo.com. So I just okay. tell most people to just, you know, buy the book if, if they feel like supporting the ministry that way. Instead of them just, you know, giving some money, I feel like I'm sowing back into life or actually giving them something, you know, uh, some for, back in return. for the uh, donation. Okay, I'll make sure I find that. If you can, if you can send that to me, I can put that in the caption uh, below, okay. so people that want to uh, to to help out, because I I truly believe in that men uh, or people who you know God put them in full time ministry, He will take care, He will yeah. provide provision. Um, Marcus, do you want to lead us in prayer at all, man? Of course, you mind? of course. Lord, Father, God, I just thank you for this precious brother. I ask, Lord God, that you increase his territory. His heart is willing, Father, to be used by you, Lord. Every person and his wife also, bless his wife, Lord God, just give her encouragement and love and peace and joy and whatever she needs at this time, Father. And every single person who tuned into this live video, who shares this video, who watches this video, let them be encouraged and inspired, Lord God. We rebuke every lie from the enemy that might be trying to dance in their mind. We don't, Lord God, we rebuke it that it doesn't take root and that doesn't grow, Father. You said that we should be planted by, like trees by the living waters and we'll bring forth fruit in due season, yes, Lord God. God. Let them to be planted and rooted in your word. Let them to be planted and rooted in your presence. Let them to seek after you like never yes, before God. in this dark, evil, wicked world. And let them know, Father, that you will never leave God. them. You will never forsake them. You will never fail them. And no matter yes, what God. they are going through, Lord God, just because there's a present of problems doesn't mean that you are absent, Lord God. You are very yes, aware God. of every single thing that they go through. Let them know that they are loved by you, Father. The Bible says yes, that perfect love casteth out all fear. They have no yes, reason God. to fear because they have a God who loves them in a perfect way, Lord God. Let them know that you have not given them the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind, and that you are working everything out for their good. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, brother. I send blessings your way and everything that you're doing. Most definitely to stay in touch. And thank you guys. If you're on here with the with us tonight, make sure you share this. Get it to other people that may could benefit from this conversation. 
So I want to say a thank you again, Marcus, man. God bless you, bro. Yes, sir. Until yes, next you, time. Bro. God bless. Yes, love sir. you too, bro. Peace. All right, guys. Thank you for getting on again, uh, yet again, with the Prime Minister. Yeah, every Monday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, just come back in the next five minutes. We'll have some captions connected to it or how you can uh, just uh, check out Marcus's book or even check out some of our paraphernalia at Primal Man. Um, follow the pages and assist um, and continue to grow together. Uh, we'll be back on next Monday. Uh, but again, I want to say to every individual that's watching, God bless you prosper and that you be empowered um until next monday primal men and women stand up stand out and stand forever every monday at eight o'clock p.m eastern standard time god bless be back in five or ten minutes and you'll begin to see the rest of the caption to assist or help in any way god bless